Well, okay, thank you very much for coming. So today the topic is um, Microtic Firewall Mangle. Uh, I'm Ahmad Bardiansha and then I'm from GLC. Okay, so it seems that the camera here. Okay, um, I will continue without the camera. Okay, so everybody can uh, see the webinar uh, smoothly. So the agenda that we'll be talking today are uh, introduction, firewall, firewall mangle, uh, some demo uh, about some configuration about the firewall mangle, and then question and answer. Okay, so what is GLC? GLC is Gardner Intas Chakrawala. Uh, we are an Indonesian company uh, located in Bandung. Our focus area are um, IT consulting and training. Uh, we are Microtech uh, certified uh, partner, uh, Ubiquity and Red Hat as well. Um, next is about the GLC webinar. Uh, the webinar is um, is an event, a regular event from us to discuss a topic about uh, IT. Okay, um, some of the uh, topics you can see it in the previous uh, webinar. Uh, the topic uh, is not only limited on uh, Linux, networking, wireless database etc so if you have any other uh, discussion or topics uh, just feel free to do so uh, uh, you also invited to become a presenter here uh, if you want to be become one and then just let us know okay send us uh, email about uh, your topic and then we will give uh, um, uh, presentations a slot for you uh, next is about me. My name is Ahmad Mardiansha. I'm based in Bandung. I was using Linux since um, using Linux since 1999. Uh, since, uh, using Mikrotik since 2007. Uh, Ubiquiti user since 2011. Certified trainer for Mikrotik Ubiquiti and Red Hat. Uh, certified consultant. Working as a telco engineer, sysadmin, programmer. I'm teaching as well. Uh, personal website is there here ahmadjournal.com if you have LinkedIn we can connect right so about yourself okay so some of you already introduced here thank you very much privately uh, doesn't matter <laughs> thank you very much so now uh, let's talk about the firewall so in uh, Microtik so firewall is a feature so the uh, menu is IP firewall so it's a feature to control network access uh, modify network header or marking packet for further processing or mangle so it is uh, I think yeah uh, I think it's developed from Linux because uh, Microtech is using Linux kernel uh, it uh, consists of two parts matchers and action uh, you should know that uh, firewall is executed sequentially so therefore network admin should understand the application's characteristic in order to build matchers so for example when people say browsing it means that they are using uh, tcp port uh, 80 okay oh actually it's not only 80 but uh, 80 and or or uh, 443 it's the https about the firewall yeah so how firewall works so we set up matchers here for example we have a new firewall rule so we have three tabs general advanced and extra tabs and then we have action here so first set up matchers and then action so Microtech has lots of matchers so as you can see three tabs here is dedicated for matchers okay so therefore it's very flexible and after we define the action so here are the matchers okay on the left and then on the right here we have the action so if we join them so we, we set up matchers and action it's become a firewall rules okay, and once again a firewall rule is executed sequentially 
Okay, well, if you already know Microtik, you should know that, uh, yeah, you should know about this thing already. <laughs> uh, just for uh, refreshing. Uh, okay, next, how the packet is processed. So, packet flow, this diagram is called packet flow. It means that how the packet is is processed uh, when they arrive on uh, at the Microtik router. So this is the uh, packet flow, both of them on top and at the bottom. So they are arrive at input interface and then go to input uh, interface. Uh, then there is uh, processing to check whether the input interface is bridge or not. And then they go to uh, uh, pre-routing over here. Okay. And then after that goes to routing decision. So it means that they are reading the routing tables. And then after reading, reading the routing tables, and then the packet will be will have two uh, decision. Either it's input or forward. Okay, so after reading the routing decisions, they have two options, forward or input. So let's say it's forward. So forward means the destination IP address or the packet is not end up at the router itself. So must be forwarded to the other interface. Okay, so that's forward. Uh, input interface is checking uh, the in output interface here and then goes to post routing and then goes to the interface Q3 if there's any and then output interface okay so if you zoom in okay pre routing input output forward and then we can see uh, uh, pre routing if you zoom in there is a uh, sub processing inside Okay. Uh, as I said previously, we need to really distinguish between forward and input. Okay. So forward means uh, the packet will be forwarded through the router. Yeah. So packet is passing through the router. So it's not end up at the router. So for example, uh, we have a router between a, a, a laptop and a server. Okay. So. Uh, so the laptop wants to ping the server through our router. So it means that it will go through the forward. So the red one here over here. Okay. So if the laptop ping the router. Okay. So end destination is the router itself. So it means it uses the input. Okay. Input flow here. So the packets coming into input interface. Uh, pre-routing goes to routing decisions and then choose input because the uh, um, destination IP address is the router itself uh, processed by the router and then we have a local process out and then um, going to the output interface okay so if you want to uh, learn of a microtech firewall you need to be able to distinguish between forward and input so after that, um, yeah, um, we need to uh, understand. So uh, previously, we know that the uh, router, uh, Microtik router board, or router OS, has three um, features for firewalls. Okay, so we have uh, filter, NAT, and mangle. Okay. Uh, in, in Linux, we call it uh, a filter table, NAT table, and mangle table. So uh, there are three of them. Actually, there is uh, one more uh, table. It's called row, but we don't talk about row table here. But it's very useful for uh, uh, mitigating the DDoS attack. So, yeah, so uh, we really, um, really, 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 um, what is it? Um, encourage people to use the row a table so um, next is uh, okay we already talk about packet processing okay and then uh, 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 the difference between forward and input okay and then so if you talk about the uh, filter table and then these are the chains okay that will be used by the uh, filter okay 
So filter, as you can see, we can apply filter on input, forward and output. So here they are. If you zoom in to the uh, sub process, uh, input, filter input is executed after mangle input. And after that, it's uh, Q3 and then simple Q. Okay, on forward, uh, filter forward is executed after we process the TTL and then mangle. And then output is uh, filter is uh, executed after the mangle output uh, and before that there is a connection uh, connection what is it connection here connection tracking yes that's correct uh, this is not uh, not um, what is it not uh, not table so only two places pre routing or post routing so we so in uh, the pre-routing, you do the destination not because you modify here is the destination address. So you change the destination address so that when they read the routing table here, it can go to uh, a certain direction. Okay, so so it doesn't make sense if you do a destination not on post routing. So it's already it's already done. <laughs> yeah, it's useless. So. Uh, for NAT, destination NAT is on pre-routing, source NAT is on uh, post-routing. And then the last one here is Mangle. Okay, so Mangle, we can apply Mangle in every uh, chain. Okay, but still remember, you should remember that uh, sequence is important. Okay, so in this webinar, we'll be talking about the web uh, firewall Mangles. And then we use uh, three actions that is very commonly used on 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 Mangal. Okay. Okay. Now firewall Mangal. So what happens on packets after Mangal? Okay. Depends on the actions. Yeah. So Mangal is just used for marking. So it's just marking. So uh, mostly nothing happen on on packets after you do mangle on it okay packet still go through if if not is empty uh, table not is empty table filter is empty and then if you do mangles nothing happens on the packet packet is still uh, coming in and coming uh, uh, come in and coming out as as usual it's not nothing happens okay so it's just for mangle Manga. Okay. Uh, uh, the thing that um, makes um, that 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 affects on packets is after the mangle. So first you do the mangle, and after that you do for further processing. As I explained before, so this mangle this mangle rules is not final. Okay, so mangle is just a starting point, right? So you start mangle, and after the mangles, you can use for drop, you can use for uh, reroute, you can use for uh, bandwidth manager, many, many ways. Okay, so mangle is just a starting point. Okay, even though there is an action for mangles, just the action is just for marking. Okay, most of them. Okay, I said most of them, not every of them. Okay, so that's how Mangal is 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 used. Right. So uh, first we talk about the Mangal uh, action. So first is packets, man, uh, mark packets. So as the name said, uh, packets, mark packet means um, it's an action to identify packets, to put marking on the packets, okay? So, because packet is flowing, okay, flowing, coming in and out, if you do mark packet, it's just only one direction, okay? So, for example, if you want to mark packet to Google DNS, okay? So, you put here IP firewall mangle at chain forward, okay? Because it is forwarded, Right, so because the destination address 8888 is not belongs to you, it belongs to Google, Google DNS. 
So that's why if you put here, well, it makes sense if you put on chain forward, right? Not chain input, of course, yeah. So IP is firewall mangle at chain forward, destination address 8888. Action is mark packet, right? So action is mark packet as our uh, slide title here. And then the new packet mark is packet to Google DNS. Right, because the destination address is there. Pass through, no. No means we don't forward the uh, packets, uh, the, the, the processing to the next room. Right, so it's only one direction. So packet that goes to 8888, the Google DNS, will be marked here. And also, what, what happens when we want to mark packet from Google DNS. So we can, we can add another uh, chain here. I'm uh, sorry, another rule here. IP firewall mangle at chain forward. Source address 8888, action mark packets. New packet mark, packet from Google DNS, okay? So previously packet to Google DNS, now packet from Google DNS. So as you can see here, Right, so that is a uh, mark packet. So what happened when we do marking here? Nothing happens, okay? <laughs> Again, nothing happens, it's only packet mark. Right, so after you understand the marking, packet marking, and then we can discuss the mark connection. So before we discuss the mark connection, we need to know what the connection is. So by definition, a connection is a relationship between two hosts. A connection is identified by a pair of IP addresses, a source and destination. And sometimes if you use ports, it's a pair of ports. It's source port and destination ports if used, okay? Well, some protocols do not use ports for communications, right? Okay, so not not all communication is using TCP or UDP, right? On layer four, right? Uh, some packets, they don't use uh, ports, so yeah. Uh, but they still have a relationship between two hosts. They still have a connection. For example, ping. Ping is using ICMP, okay? They don't use uh, uh, ports, right? Okay, so that can be, we can, we can track the connection. So, because connection is relationship between two hosts, okay, so that means mark connection is two-way, right? So, that's why when we set up connection, between, when we want to mark a connection between Google DNS and web server. So, let's say we have an internal web server, and then the web server IP address is 192.168.1.10 here. And also uh, Google DNS, you know that, okay? So we just define IP firewall mangle at chain forward. Destination's IP address is 8888. Source address is here. Action is mark connection. And then we specify the new connection mark, okay? Connection, con minus Google DNS, pass through no. So that means we can just specify um, only one rule and then the uh, connections will be uh, displayed uh, on Microtik. So if you go to uh, firewall connections, so just go to IP, firewall, then connections, there you can see the IP address of uh, Google DNS. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, IP of Google DNS, okay, of course. And then the connection mark, right? Okay, so we can we can specify here is connection Google DNS. So as you can see, so we, we know that okay, this connection is still alive, this connection is uh, stop, and others. So a connection here it means that oh okay, so it has to have a TCP. No, it's not. As you can see here, um, I'm here um, setting up a connection for. Uh, DNS query. So as you as you know, DNS query is using uh, UDP, right? So that one, Microtik is is able to 
do uh, connection tracking for even for UDP okay so um, yeah I, I, maybe you're a little bit confused between TCP and then this smart connection <laughs> where TCP is connection oriented yes uh, we do understand that TCP oriented means uh, there is always a state uh, during the um, yeah there is a state uh, uh, during the uh, uh, communication okay there's a state for that but doesn't mean that uh, uh, UDP cannot be tracked by uh, by my, my micro ticket database All right so yeah that is the uh, firewall connection so next is uh, mark routing okay so previously we already know uh, mark packets and then mark connection okay and then the next action is uh, mark routing so it's used for mark packets okay remember mark packet so it's not mark connection we cannot do mark connection for routing so <laughs> because uh, as you as you know the picture here is packet flow not connection flow okay packet flow so it explains how the packet is processed on a micro tick okay so this one so a uh, big uh, mark routing again is used for mark mark packet for routing purpose so router is uh, forwarding packets not connection right <laughs> so therefore as you can see here routing mark should be done before it reached the routing table over here so it has to be done at pre routing chain okay so it has to be done on pre routing so so we just mark packets for routing purpose so is it possible if we put a uh, routing mark in uh, routing uh, sorry uh, mark packets in mat routing at the same time Yes, it is possible because it is using for different purpose. Mark packet is just for marking packets. Mark routing is marking packet for routing purpose. Uh, is do they write something? Do they modify the headers? No, it's not. Uh, they, no, they are not. Okay, they they are, they are not uh, changing anything on header. Okay, mark routing, mark packet, mark connection is nothing to do of changing the header no they are not so it's just for router os propose for marking yeah yeah so nothing nothing changed on the header so again so this is one example so uh for example uh, ip firewall mangal add chain forward destination address 888 source address is uh, 1.10 and then the action is marked routing. The routing mark is via ISP1. Okay. So uh, if if the destination is 888 from 192.168.1.0, yeah. So if you want to go to Google from this IP address, I want to forward it to ISP1. So it's very easy. So how to do that? So uh, we need to uh, we need support from routing table so uh, before we already set up the uh, IP firewall mangle here so the first mangle is already done and then after that we add a new route okay on routing table so IP route at destination address 0000, 000, 0, slash 0. the gateway for example the gateway for ISP1 is 1.1.1.1.1 and then we specify routing mark for that okay so that means every package that has mark uh, of via minus isp1 will be forwarded through i2 isp1 okay as simple as that so so today we just only talk about uh, a three uh, um, routing as three three mangles actions so first action is uh, mangle um, packets okay mark packets second mangle action is uh, mark connection okay and then the next is mark routing right 
So I think uh, that's all. Oh, so uh, it's a different slide here. Okay, so if you are interested, uh, just go to our schedule. Okay. Uh, there you can see our schedule there. Uh, if you are interested, you can contact us to join our training. Okay, so this is the end of the slide. If you have any uh, questions, okay, don't just uh, feel free to uh, ask a question here. Uh, if I can answer that, then uh, I will answer it right away. Okay, any more questions? Right, so okay, I have a I have a question here. Uh, it's uh, sent from uh, sent to uh, my private uh, message here. Right, so is it is it possible to do load balancing here? Oops, uh, okay, so it means that I put too much, too many slides here. Uh, what about load balancing? Yes, yes, uh, very good question. So load balancing already, we already all, we have, uh, we have the load balancing um, uh, webinar, I think. Uh, maybe we can repeat that in the future, okay. Record it and then upload it on YouTube. Okay, so my election is mark uh, yes uh, for load balancing. So for example, if you have one router, okay, on your local uh, uh, site, and then from this site, you have two connections to go to internet ISP one, ISP two. Okay, so you have two connections. Uh, Ethernet one goes to ISP one. Ethernet two goes to ISP two. For example. And for that, um, yeah, you want to do load balancing. So if request coming from server one to outside, they go through ISP one uh, customer. Uh, so uh, if packets from ISP, uh, sorry, laptop one goes to ISP one, two goes to ISP two. Okay. Yeah, for that one, yes, it is possible. So that one requires smart routing. So because you have one one uh, router, and then you have two outgoing connection. Yeah, so uh, you should use smart routing. So that depends. That depends on the technique. Okay. Um, for example, you want to use technique name uh, and N T H. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can you can use it. Uh, or you can use uh, packet for PCC per connection uh, classifier. Okay, so so it will um, make a decision based on the connection that is made by connection. Okay, and then uh, for the connection, uh, you can define connection based on the IP address only, based on the pair IP address. Okay, uh, source IP address, destination IP address, so it's up to you. So there are lots of uh, options where how you define a connection. Okay, as I said on the slide here, when you do mark connection, oh, sorry. Yeah, so a connection is the relationship between two hosts. Okay, uh, uh, that could be identified by uh, IP address, okay, source and destination. Uh, for that purpose, for load balancing, uh, if you use PCC, uh, the uh, classifier, PCC, per connection classifier, uh, you can use uh, a yeah, pair of IP address, you can use a source based on source IP address uh, only, you can use based on uh, destination IP address only, uh, you can use a pair that is defined by a pair of IP address and then pair of port address. Okay, it is possible as well. Well, it's up to you. Yeah, so there are many ways how you define connection. Okay, any more questions? No more questions? Right, so if there's no questions, and thank you very much for coming. Uh, we are very happy uh, if you're coming here. 
thank you very much and see you again in the future yeah